everybody, Trevor here. Now, I've been wanting to talk about this for a very long time, but the reason why I didn't earlier was because my computer broke down and I had to get a new one to replace it. Also, the computer didn't come with iMovie, but instead, a generic video editing software that's even worse than iMovie. So I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. Today I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on Big World Big Adventures. Not only will I talk about the movie itself, but also the series as a whole. In addition, I will be discussing both the pros and cons about this revamp at the same time. Now without further ado, let's begin, shall we? The first thing I want to talk about is the elephant in the room. The bouncing. I've watched plenty of videos and read many comments complaining about the bouncing, and I can relate because it mainly goes against the realism of the show. But to be quite honest, this change doesn't anger me too much because I can understand where Mattel is coming from. I mean, it gives the characters more personality and makes them more animated than ever. But at the same time, it's just kind of distracting. Overall, I'm mixed with this change but I still would have preferred it if the characters don't bounce so much like in Pixar's cars and kept their original static bodies like they used to. The second thing I want to talk about are the songs in the movie. In my honest opinion, I think the songs are pretty good for the years. My favorite of which is Free and Easy because of its catchy tune and peppy beat. I even like the part where Carlos makes a brief appearance in the middle of the song. Now, a piece of trivia that you may not know is that there was an extended version where Carlos talks about sun worshippers, and then out of nowhere, he transforms into one and starts dancing to Mexican music while making silly faces. I believe this scene was cut because it can offend some viewers, which I can't complain because I find it weird seeing Carlos dance like that anyways. Next, I'll be discussing the new characters of the movie and the show. Most of them are okay characters, except for Ace, who is kind of a jerk. I don't like Ace that much because he made Thomas play a trick on Nia during their trip to San Francisco, California, and I even hate the beginning part of the film where he almost ran over the Reverend W. Audrey himself. I know he's a race car and all, but aren't race cars supposed to follow the rules of the road as well? Nia is an okay character in my opinion, though she's kind of a Mary Sue. Sure, she's friendly and helpful, but her only character flaw was not knowing how to read numbers. You see, what makes a certain character very interesting is that he or she has one or more flaws. For example, Thomas has a cheeky and fussy little engine who is always eager to help out, though he can be rather impatient and forgetful sometimes but he still has a heart of gold. He often plays tricks and teases the other engines, especially Gordon, but eventually gets into trouble with Sir Topham Hat, aka the Fat Controller. And that is what makes Thomas so likable and memorable. Nia, on the other hand, she's almost a Mary Sue, but I wouldn't consider her as bad as Chloe from the Fairly Odd Parents because she's far, far worse than Nia. Rebecca is also an okay character. I like her yellow paint design and voice actress, but the biggest problem I have with her is that she's basically Molly 2.0. Why can't they just bring back Molly instead? I mean, we haven't seen her since The Great Discovery. See what happens when you introduce too many new characters into the show? When it comes to the movie, the only two new engines I kind of liked are Kwaku and Bo. I like Kwaku for his sense of humor, as well as the fact that he's the first Garrett locomotive in the show. That is, if you discount the Australian Garrett from that YouTube series. I even liked his voice actor for the character because he also voiced Bayek from Assassin's Creed Origins, which is one of my favorite games in the series. But if there's one problem I have with Kwaku, is that he only appeared in one scene of the movie. I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure he misses Nia after she moved to Sodor. As for Bo... The reason why I liked him in the first place was because he is based on the classic 440 American Standard locomotive, which is honestly one of my favorite American designs of all time. 
I also like his mustache as well as Carrie Shale's voice for him. But one thing I don't like about him is that he basically made a joke about a scrap engine lying in the desert next to Thomas and Ace, which is pretty disgusting if you think about it. Also, he said there aren't many breakdown cranes in his area, when in reality, there are plenty of breakdown cranes in the USA. Aside from those faults, let's hope we'll see more of him and Kwaku in the near future. Now, keep in mind that I'm not going to express my thoughts on all of the new characters in the reboot, because if I did, we'd be here all day, so I only want to focus on the more interesting ones. For example, when it comes to Italian characters, my favorite of which would probably be Stefano the Supercruiser. What I like about him is that he's friendly and likes to tell stories to all the characters that he's with. I honestly thought his design was very creative because he can go on land and in water. In other words, he's amphibious. Heck, I was able to buy the Supercruiser toy at my local Target last year, and it's pretty fun to play with. Dexter is another character that I happen to like, not to be confused with the one in Dexter's Laboratory, by the way. Not only he's voiced by Mark Morgan himself, but the fact that he's pretty much based on those coaches that only appear in the magazine stories, such as the play coach. Heck, even the episode itself is inspired by that one story, and that's what makes School of Duck one of my favorite episodes of season 22. Let's talk about Darcy for a minute. What makes her unique is that she's capable for digging tunnels easily. I even like the additional goggles that she wears while digging. And Harriet Kershaw does a perfect job with her voice. I'm Darcy, and I'm a tunnel boring machine. Oh, what does a tunnel boring machine do? I do tunnels! <gasps> As for Brenda, well, even though I miss Byron the Bulldozer, but I think she is a nice addition to the team because I don't want Isabella to be the only female in the team. In fact, I can imagine Brenda working together with Byron someday. Now, I get that Mattel wanted more girl power, and that's perfectly fine, but I would really love it if they gave an explanation on Byron's absence. And although I like Brenda's Welsh accent, but it should have been UK exclusive because if you do research on her basis, then you'd know that she's built by an American manufacturer called Caterpillar. I mean, Teresa Galker has done American accents before, so why not make Brenda sound more like Natalie? Speaking of Natalie, even though I like her voice and personality, but I personally hate the fact that she's a recolor of Dart. If Natalie's an American diesel shunter, why not make her a Plymouth or even a Whitcomb diesel? Forgive me for sounding like a total nerd, but as a die-hard Thomas fan, I'm expecting some historical accuracy and consistency within the show itself. For instances, all the UK designs should have UK accents, the American designs should be American, etc, etc, etc. And that leads me to my next problem. The recolors. Look, I get it. New models cost money and effort, and that's understandable, but at the same time, it's just freaking lazy. One of my least favorites is this Raul knockoff from the movie. He's just Raul, but with an added mustache and a different coat of paint. I mean, he's just forgettable. Thankfully, Mattel brought back the real Raul in season 23, and his new voice actor suits him perfectly. But let's move on to another thing I like about this reboot, the diverse voice cast. I thought Mattel did a very decent job making the foreign characters sound like in their respective countries. For instances, Yang Bao is voiced by Dan Lee, Gustavo was voiced by Francisco Labe, Gina is voiced by Anna Franciolini, sorry if I mispronounced her last name, and Shane's voiced by Shane Jacobson. I think diversity is a good thing because it makes the show more interesting than just using white people speak with stereotypical foreign accents like in The Great Race. Speaking of diversity, I know I'm going to get some backlash for saying this, but I don't mind more girl power in the show, especially when it comes to the STEAM team. Now don't get me wrong, I love Edward, Henry, and Toby, but I can understand why they're being replaced by Nia and Rebecca. I mean, Edward, Henry, and Toby are wise engines, but they can also be gullible misfits. They can sometimes go out of character, especially in previous seasons. For example, Hit Entertainment made Henry and Toby shy and timid characters, and sometimes in the classic series, 
Henry himself can be a bit of a grump like Gordon. So therefore, I thought it was a fine change for Edward to live on his own branch line with Philip and Henry at Vickerstown Sheds with Rosie. Another thing I like about Big World Big Adventures is the new theme song. <laughs> I love this new theme song so much. While the engine roll call theme is okay, but I think this new one is a huge improvement because it gives the series a fresh new start. Even though it is a reissue of another Thomas song that I like, but I still think it's fun and catchy on its own. Heck, there are also different versions of this song in different dubs, like the South African version, which sounds really cool. But do you know what the sad thing is? Even though they got a new theme song now, but they're still using the engine roll call theme at the end of every show, just with some different lyrics here and there. What's worse is that Toby is still in the engine roll call theme song, despite not being part of the Steam team anymore. What. The. Hell. What's the point of keeping in the Toby lyrics if you've already kicked him out along with Edward and Henry? Another problem I had with Big World Big Adventures was Thomas being the narrator. I know Mark Morgan is still working on the show, but I think they would have had him narrate more seasons than just seasons 17 through 21. I mean, I find it really weird seeing Thomas narrating the stories, including the intro and outro of each episode. One of the things that made Thomas magical in the first place was that the morals were actually subtle. We don't need Thomas hammering in these messages down our ears at the end of every new episode. Gosh! If they want a new narrator, why not hire an actual actor that's as talented as Mark Morgan? Besides, Mark Hamill would make an excellent choice. But the worst part of the reboot of all, in my opinion, has to be the dream sequences. I get that it's all in their imagination, but at the same time, it goes against the realism of the show. The biggest problem I have with these fantasies is that they are mostly filler. If you cut them out entirely, the plot would pretty much be the same without them. I know that this is a kid's show, but does every episode of Thomas nowadays have to have a dream sequence? But I don't hate all of them. For examples, I thought the ones in Free the Roads and First Day on Sodor were hilarious. But most of the other ones are either cringeworthy or just plain weird. Say what you will about the ones in the previous seasons, but at least they had some sort of consistency. For instance, this scene in the other side of the mountain where Thomas dreams of being a jet plane, which is a possible reference to Sticky Toffee Thomas where he imagines himself driving a plane. After all, he was jealous of Jeremy at one point. Now I've saved the best for last. My most favorite part of the Big World Big Adventures era is... The Great Race characters returning to the series. I mean, they brought back Ashima, Rajiv, Yambao, Shane, Carlos, Raul, and even Gina. And don't worry guys, I'm pretty sure they'll bring back the others too, just so they can have more character development and new lines. At first, they were only going to appear in The Great Race, which would have been very disappointing, but thankfully, Mattel changed their minds and brought most of them back to the show. I can't wait to see Ivan and Frida again, but with new voice actors. But that's not all. They also brought back the Flying Scotsman, Cyril, Miss Jenny, and most surprisingly, Sam. I never thought Mattel would bring back a merchandise-exclusive character just for this movie. Isn't that awesome? Here's hoping Logan and Dustin will make a comeback as well. Overall, Big World Big Adventures as a whole is a very mixed bag. It's got some things I like, but it's also got other things that I despise. The writing itself isn't as bad as in the Sharon Miller era, but it's still not as good as seasons 17 through 21, which in my opinion will always be the true renaissance era for the show. Also, there are plenty of good episodes, but there are a few other ones that are pretty bad. And as a true Thomas fan myself, 
I promise that I'll always be a loyal fan of the show, no matter how good or bad some of the changes are. Because it's so hard for me to outgrow something that I truly love ever since I was a toddler. And this is one of the few kids shows that I refuse to grow out of. After all, it is my number one favorite preschool show, with Theodore Tugboat being second. Well, those are my thoughts on Big World Big Adventures, and it's probably my best rant video to date. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please feel free to leave a comment and subscribe if you want to. And please let me know what I could improve on. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.